think there's, there's two sides to that. Some people talk about more urban mining and about end-of-life batteries kind of harvesting from landfills. There is potential for that. And then there's the other side about the primary materials where it's more about, you know, tailings. And the industry thing is, as decades go by, what used to be a waste product is now a very valuable product. You know, decades ago, cobalt essentially was a very low material. And it was disposed of in tailings when people were trying to recover nickel and copper. And now people are going back to those decades of tailings piles and trying to recover cobalt. <coughs> and essentially, every time you recover one element and remove it from the mainstream, you're concentrating the other elements, whether you call them products or impurities. And again, our battery recycling train, we recover 11 products to sell back to the market. And as we go through that trunk line, every time we remove a product, it makes it easier to remove the next product because then that contaminant or product is removed. So I think I would say for primary minerals, it's already happening. There are quite a few tailings being exploited for new types of minerals. For actually going to urban mining and landfills for end-of-life batteries, Hopefully we're early enough in the industry where we can catch them before they get there and we won't have to actually be going through the landfills themselves at deep. Mm -hmm. And I think the way to look at it is, again, by onshoring more operations and using a greater percentage of recycled material, you really can have much more visibility and control over those. Mining has historically been a very high impact industry. Just a few years ago, there was, was a Time Magazine analysis of the 10 most polluted places on earth and the top six were all mining sites. Mostly nickel and copper and a lot of rare earth elements. The number six was Chernobyl. So showing many mining sites are more polluting than a nuclear meltdown. And the way to get past that again is to have new types of processes. In the US, we may not have the exact same type of conventional resources, but that doesn't mean we don't have the elements within the country itself. And by developing and commercializing new technologies, we're less reliant on those legacy techniques in these countries with much lower standards. So it's a combination of new technology development and the onshoring. And like I mentioned there, there is that that floor where OEMs and consumers really just shouldn't buy the material, period. Again, it comes back to the fact that while we have so many battery cell factors in the US, we have very few facilities upstream to actually make the materials. So it comes back to kind of the, the carrot or stick approach. You know, up until recently, there were efforts to, to punish people who don't use recycled materials or who don't recycle them. In a few years ago, that may have been necessary because material prices were much lower. There wasn't as much of an infrastructure. But these days, we can make the exact same feed materials from recycled content in the U.S. at lower cost than source them from abroad. A lot of linear R&D is still being done in the U.S. and in Europe. And I think that is our way ahead, is to keep moving forward with the best technology. And now that we have government support and large corporations behind it, the scale can catch up to it. But it's really different too. There's not a lot of technology in China we don't have. It's really a big head start because they prioritize it before the rest of the world.